University of Florida has been working in a partnership with the U.S. Geological Survey and NASA Environmental to uh, provide some information as to why the particular areas of the beach that are uh, near the launch pads have uh, undergone erosion, especially after major storms. Sea level is important because what it does is it gradually moves that high tide line closer to land, but it also allows for storm surge to move closer to land. So what you see as you lift, as sea level rises, it moves that interface landward. Um, as far as climate change, you know, it'll be a consequence of rising sea level, but also the frequency of storms. Our role as, as the geological scientists has been uh, to really quantify how much change is occurring and what style it's occurring. And that information is being used to inform some of the decision making that NASA is, is leading. We've been keeping an eye on the shoreline for many years now, and it was actually in 2004 when we had the devastating effects of the, the big trifecta of hurricanes of Charlie Francis and Jean, and we really started to see the erosion on the shoreline and the washouts underneath the railroad tracks and the washovers, and um, we realized that, that this you know, was a long-term problem that we really needed to address. We're measuring the shape of the beach and how much sand is here. We use a global positioning system, GPS, uh, corrected so that we have very high precision measurements. What we'll do is we'll uh, drive up and down the beach measuring the elevation. What you really have seen in the last five years is, uh, especially after Hurricane Sandy, a part of the dunes from here south towards 39A that was uh, largely removed during the storm. So where we're standing right here behind you, there used to be a, a tall dune that was probably about six feet high. It's gone now because Sandy took it out. The dune, it's at a higher elevation than the beach. But if the water gets high enough due to one of these storms and elevated water levels during the storm surge and high waves, that can overtop the dune, erode it down, and then you've got a much more vulnerable spot. We've built a, um a new secondary dune out there uh, on the beach line, and but that's just a portion of it. We still have another three miles that we'd like to install and, uh, and resurrect a secondary dune because we're very concerned about the launch infrastructure, the launch pads A and B, because without that secondary dune, um, another big storm, we could have saltwater intrusion at the launch pad. But we do have contingency in our master plan for the Kennedy Space Center that would allow us to build additional launch pads if we needed to build them somewhere else. But at this point, we don't envision doing that. We've collected at least five years worth of monthly observations. So ideally, we'd like to keep coming out here at least once a year for as long as NASA will give us access so that we can really continue this long data set that's really unique in terms of coastal processes. Understanding how beaches change and how the shoreline retreats to different events and even longer term um, processes is is, uh, is important for economics, it's important for policy making, it's, uh, it's just knowing about our environment in which we live.